Welcome to a new episode of the Cap Podcast, Consumer Ammunition Tactics Podcast. We got a blessed new episode. We got a special guest. His name is uh, Daniel Dixon. I'm going to read his bio, and we're going to get straight to it. So his name is Daniel Dixon Jr. He's the CEO and founder of Next Level Advising LLC, where he helps entrepreneurs and business owners scale their businesses by leveraging the power of personal credit. He helps repair and enhance credit and structure their businesses properly to obtain funding from the banks. We're probably going to talk about some of the banks. He started his business in September of 2022, so just last year, because he saw the power of using the three-digit number and obtaining five to six figures in credit to invest back into yourself and your business. Many of the wealthy leverage their credit and obtain good debt and have many tax benefits at the end of the year. His goal is to inspire people that there's a way to make money and fulfill a passion they've always wanted to chase. Welcome to the podcast, Danny. How you living, bro? Michael, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the pack. Thanks for having me on the podcast, bro. Appreciate it. Definitely. You. Most definitely. Most definitely. So let's get let's just get straight to it. Can you tell us a little bit about like what got you into credit? Did you just wake up one day and you're like, oh, I'm going to tap into credit? You know what I'm saying? Like, let us let us know about that. I'm going to give you a little backstory about how I got started to it. But like I said, my name is uh, Daniel Dixon, um, mm-hmm. CEO of Next Level Advising. And growing up, I always had a vision planted, you know, a seed planting in my brain that I've always wanted to be rich. I've always wanted to be wealthy, but the right way. So for me, you know, two blessed parents, you know, they've always sent me to a private, you know, a private school. I went to a private preschool, private elementary, private middle school, private high school. And then three years in college, I went to a private high school. So always very educated. I knew I wanted to make money and I knew how to get my money but I kind of didn't know where to start. So mm-hmm. when I went into college, I went to college for entrepreneurship. And just to be honest, you know, nothing against school, you know, education is great, but I wasn't learning anything. Yeah. And freshman year, we had COVID. So we were out of school. It was all online. So we couldn't really take on any internships. Um, a whole bunch of stuff happened. Sophomore year, junior year, I ain't gonna lie, you know, I kind of wasted those two years, you know, going out. Not yeah, really. And so it was just kind of I wasted it myself. And to my third year, um, I joined a network marketing group, phenomenal group to this day. I'm not part of it anymore, but that's really what opened my eyes to making money, learning how to, you know, make your money work for yourself. Yeah. Meet other like-minded people. And the more and more I got tapped into it, right? Um, I figured out that the way that the wealthier make money is that they leverage their credit and create good debt. Mm-hmm. And me being 21 at the time, I didn't know anything about credit. So this goes back to March of 2022. I knew nothing about credit, man. Oh wow. Luckily, I had like a I had a six, I had a 670 credit score um due to my student loans. So that's what I actually boosted my credit score, but I knew nothing about credit. Um, then, you know, I go, we go towards June, July, August, that's September of 2022. Mm-hmm. My mentor actually, um, gave me the opportunity to start my own credit prep business. And this was with like another academy, very mm-hmm. grateful, very grateful for this academy. But during those four months, man, I was educating myself more about credit. I was affiliating for other people, kind of getting my feet wet a little bit. But once I had this opportunity, given to me you know the mentorship was like 5k but i didn't have 5k at the time so they were like we have a special promotion for you yada 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 and i'm just like okay how do i get started if i don't have any money yeah yeah exactly you can actually leverage your personal credit and take the funding from the banks and use that to invest and then with the the power of credit you get time to pay it back over time Mm -hmm. so September is when you know, I officially launched. Um, so far, bro, it, it's been so good. I'm educating myself every day, um, teaching people about the base of credit because they don't even teach this stuff in schools. Yeah, facts. You know this for a fact that this is something that you have to educate yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you're not educated, you know, you're going to make a lot of financial mistakes in the future. And then it's like, you're going to have to go turn around and, you know, maybe you have to file for this or clear all your credit profile. My job and my goal and my mission is to really educate people on the importance of credit and to let people know that you can literally make money 
if you don't have the capital by leveraging your personal credit score. It's, right. it's I've I've made money doing this, so I'm a true testimonial to my word. Um, dope. Yeah, that's that's about it, bro. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, you said something interesting. So you mentioned mentorship. I know a lot of my current listeners are some of my mentees already, so they know the power of investing in themselves. But anyone that's a new listener, can you tell us a little bit about how you actually went about finding your mentor and what what gave you the mindset to have a mentor at like what twenty one years old? So my first mentor ever, I would say, funny, funny story how it happened. So I was in a previous network marketing company yeah. in August of 2021. And gotcha. the first three months, I didn't really take it seriously. Like, think about it. I was in college, so I'll, I'll hop on the call. It's just not even there. I'll hop on the call. Yeah. like, so I was not taking anything serious. yeah, yeah. yeah. Until one day, I was part of a whole group chat, and you know I get a this is this was part of like a Saturday morning. So Friday night we all went out. Sat Sunday Saturday morning I'm just laying in bed. I'm like, yo, like this is cool. <laughs> you know, many many people been there, but I get it. But yeah. the one of the story is I get a text, and the text was like, yo, Danny, um, I appreciate you for hopping in this group. I don't think this is fit for you because you're not taking it serious and I can't work with anybody with that mindset. Mm. So, wow. That, that hurt. First time that. <laughs> I appreciate it to this day. So that was the yeah. first time I got checked. Mm -hmm. Ever since that day, that's when I really started to take mentorship important. I didn't even invest money to them. And that's the reason why I got checked. Mm. And I, mm -hmm. uh, people, people say they want mentorship for free but i guarantee you if you pay if you go with it for free you're going to take it as like i have to say this if you it's the mindset so if you don't pay anything and i feel like the results in the um effort that you're going to put towards it is free whereas if you pay it's like man, i paid i worked i worked hard for this money and i invest into it i'm going to take it serious yeah. um, to answer to further answer that question michael um, since then, like I've invested over five figures into education because mm -hmm. I went to events, seminars. So I understand the power of investing. I understand the power of mentorship because a mentor is somebody that's already got the results that you want and mm -hmm. they're going to time two X that it took them to get there. So it's literally a cheat code to success. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that tactic. I had to go through it the hard way. Yeah. Um, my advice is anybody new that's watching this, a mentor is the going to be the best way to go to get success quicker and to cut the mistakes so you don't have to make the same ones that they did. Definitely. 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 They're going to think that I paid you to be saying this because you sounded like how I be talking when I'm talking to them. I'm just like, I'm not the only one that thinks like this. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like that you um said that. So you had your mentor that checked you back in 2021 and then that led you to your credit mentor. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, so how'd you link up? Did he like say, did the one that checked you tell you yep. to go over there or how'd that happen? So the same one that checks me, um, yeah, we were like like really close. So the same one yeah. that checked me, um, we were in the same company together. Then he went to a a different opportunity, which was having your own credit repair business. Oh, okay. He was seeing results and then he told me about it. He gave me the opportunity. One thing that, you know, a lot of people one thing that a lot of people don't understand is the power of an opportunity. And I know this because I used to be there, but a lot of people's egos get in the way of them actually getting success. Cause mm -hmm. then the opportunity, they'll be like, Oh, I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know about it. Or they'll just make some type of excuse, but it's like, they don't really want it. And yeah. with me now, it's like when I talk to people and I give people opportunities at first, I used to be so mad because like, I'm giving you the opportunity why don't you want to take it? But mm -hmm. time, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink it. Exactly. It's got to be the right person that wants to take the opportunity. They're going to go for it. So I saw that opportunity. I knew that I needed to learn more about credit because what I want is going to revolve around me making a lot of money. So mm -hmm. opportunity, I ran with it. I didn't, I had no second question. I was like, I saw it. Um, I saw what the mentorship provided. And I was like, yeah, I I'm running with this. Definitely. And how it linked up was my mentor met somebody else and basically 
there was like a opportunity call, you know, like they have all okay. these opportunities and I landed in the opportunity call. I don't remember how it happened. It was supposed to happen for a reason. And then on the call, he was like, if you have a six, it's like a six, seven or six, 80 score above. I have a special play for you. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, what's the play? He told me about it. Got a couple of credit cards, invested, and then got everything going. So, mm -hmm. you, I like the way that you said that you didn't even know how it happened. So I'm, I speak about it on my podcast. I'm big on divine timing. So I feel like if something's happening, God is low-key being like, giving you that alley-oop. If you fumble it, you know what I'm saying? That's on you. So it's like, you can't, we got to understand, especially with credit, there are people scamming, but everything's not a scam at the end of the day. So I like that you took action, you moved forward with it, and then you started, you know, your credit repair business. So let's talk about your credit repair business. So you've been helping people fix their credit as well as getting funding, or what is that? what does that process look like? So the process right now is the main thing that I've been doing is helping people fix their credit. And gotcha. as far as people funded, I've gotten people funded, but that's part of the personal side. I'm actually mm -hmm. one of my other business partners. Um, I'm partnered with him and we actually help people get funding together. So I'm okay. partnered so I can learn more about the game and kind of, I want to say kind of leverage him to mm -hmm. educated Get more results so when i'm fully confident on myself then i'll be doing it all by myself but um it's kind of like doing affiliate work affiliate working with that but to answer that question the main thing i do is i teach people about like just basic credit education like what are the five factors made of the yeah. like the laws like um mm -hmm. like how to attack um and i know you're big into consumer law bro you know I, I've, I've been looking at your page as well and you're huge yeah. consumer we don't know that you know we have you know we have rights as you know consumers they don't teach this stuff in school either so mm -hmm. really and then that you know you can re you know remove anything that's unverifiable and, and inaccurate but you have yeah. to do you have to do it and you have to do it the right way so um mm -hmm. that comes time mentorship a lot of ed education but you know it's been it's been really good so far definitely 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 so you started you created your LLC September 2022, and then that's when you started. Were you like fixing people's credit before then? Well, I wasn't fixing anybody's credit. I was kind of okay. just creating, kind of getting my feet wet. Um, gotcha. when, I, when I first launched my business, that's when I first started fixing people's credit. That's when I just got the gotcha. LLC ID number, all this stuff that you need to um, structure. Yeah. Your okay, okay, okay. I like what you're saying too, because mainly my audience, we have people that are aspiring to have to do a credit repair business as well as people that are already having a credit repair business. So the fact that they're seeing you in, you know, in a moment as you're elevating, if we get you back on a podcast like a year from now, you're all not a random seven figures in a day. You know what I'm saying? We can see the growth, <laughs> you know, so it's kind of dope seeing where you're at and where you're about to be. So, you know, I can kind of see the mindset that you have. I wanted to talk about what's really been working for you in your business so far, because we do serve those people they're stuck at maybe that five to 10 K a month mark. So what has been working well for you in your business so far? This has been working for me. My business is one, you have to be consistent, mm -hmm. um, more educated that you are, the more that you can listen to your clients problems and provide a solution. Um, mm -hmm. I, I used to struggle. I remember I couldn't get any results and I just kept asking like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And it's not necessarily that you're doing anything wrong. Part of it is, is going to, take time because yeah. me a new business where this is my this is my first business and me making myself it's like oh i'm the new credit guy people are like what what, what does danny know about credit so they're not gonna mm -hmm. really but what's gonna help you is by posting like when i started mm -hmm. posting reels and that actually helps me to get in front of a camera and speak better so mm -hmm. I, like I, in my previous company I used to be so afraid of getting on camera. I used to be so afraid of. Oh, uh, really? I used to, I used to stutter on the calls. Like it was so bad. But when I started this business, I started creating content. Um, they started to like um, catch fire and people started noticing them. They were like, yo, like your videos are so good. Like I seen that you're putting in the work. How do I get started? Or mm -hmm. people like, you're inspiring me to keep going. And then now I notice other people as well. They're starting to create the same type of, real types uh same type mm -hmm. of so it's content consistency and once you get educated about how the actual credit repair process works 
mm-hmm. it's going to explain to the client better, even though they don't really care about the process. They care about they the don't. Results. Yeah. They just, they just care about themselves. They care about the results. But yeah. I find it a lot better just more educated. Um, being more educated, going back to what I said, being more consistent, posting the content and really listening to what your client needs. Because when I first started, I ain't gonna lie, I was like, sale, 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 sale. I'm just trying to get money. But mm. I I personally missed out on a lot of sales because I was so eager to get the sale rather than actually listening to what they needed. Yeah, because gotcha. I might not even need credit repair. Mm. Not a client like this before. Um, just speaking humbly, where I took them in, but it's like their profile was clean. It's just like, why do you need credit repair? Mm-hmm. They, were just, they were just in debt. And I was like, oh, pay it back. Like mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just so many things that um, that you learn with over time. You're gonna make mistakes, but just really educating and learning from your mistakes, and of course, just having you know mentors around you too. You can always ask questions if you don't know how to do something. You have them right there to answer the questions and to guide you through the process that you need to know. Definitely. No, that's definitely huge. It's huge to just talking about, you know, not being too thirsty for the sale. And they could tell too, you know, even if it's not conscious, it might be subconsciously, they're just like, okay, something's not resonating with, you know, the person. So, you know, I like that point and I hope that that helps someone out there. Can you tell us just for, I guess, inspirational purposes, um, maybe one of your more, more memorable client wins? I know sometimes when people struggle with maybe deleting a stubborn collection or repo or something or, you know, whatever, whatever's uh, memorable. My first uh, aha aha moment where I was like, wow, this was back in, I think, December. I brought on a client really close with him since childhood. And he had a lot, like a lot of collections. Um, He just had a lot of things on his credit report. And I remember the first round, excuse me, I remember the first round, he had like 29 items deleted. Oh, wow. Like, wow. Mm. And then going forward, um, since then, I remember I had some guy that was in like the 400s. Um, Man. After the first round, he got up to like the 650s. I was like, wow. Nice. Yes, nice. He came to me. He was like, yeah, I'm trying to provide for my family. Um, I'm looking for a house. Um mm. Take care of my kids. It's like now he's a six eighty. It's like he definitely take care of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then really, those are the 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 main you know biggest clients wins that I've seen is just really helping people get from like the four hundreds to the six hundreds and finally cracking the seven hundreds. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as I've gone towards, because I kind of reshifted my brand because at first I was really um, just accepting everybody in. So mm-hmm. now last like the past six weeks like to this as i'm still doing this is restructuring my brand to just focus on that target audience and that's also going to help you too is speak on exactly we have to find out exactly who you want to sell your services to because Mm -hmm. what's going to happen is is that you're going to allow people in your business you're going to get some of those people that that want refunds because like you you provide them all the services you're going to have those people that are not going to take it seriously then they're going to update their credit monitoring service all this stuff but my focus now is that we, we, we talked about that I help entrepreneurs and business owners. The reason why I want to target these people is because when I was, when I first launched and out of all my clients, the clients that got the best results, the clients that listened to me most and the clients that took it seriously were those type of people because they understood yeah. the power of investing. They understood, oh, I need good credit to get to this. So yeah. you run the play and then they're going to run the play. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. No, that that's that's huge. I speak about that too. So I, I I love that you said, you know, the whole client avatar, just figuring out who your client avatar is. I encourage people to sit and think, like humanize your client avatar. Maya, 33 years old, she's a small business owner. Maybe um she has kids or whatever. So no, I'll definitely um drop in some gems there. So let's talk about the secret sauce. What's your methods for removal? Are we doing metro too? Are we doing consumer law? Are we doing factual? What are we doing? When I first started, um, it was it was factual. It was factual gotcha. speaking. So mm-hmm. you know how factual to speaking first. Like you look at the account and you're saying you're based on the factual nature. Like oh, this account is unverifiable. This account is inaccurate. Yeah. And then I invested into another mentorship group like seven weeks ago. This is why I, I rechanged everything. And 
I got introduced to Metro 3 compliance. I'm like, what is Metro 3 compliance? And with Metro 3 compliance, it's how the system works is, you probably know how the system works, but for the people listening yeah, to yeah. it, yeah. How, how Metro 2 works is any letter that goes to the credit bureaus, um, the, the credit bureaus, they get like a million, two million letters per month. So they created this machine called eOscar. And this is the machine that basically codes all the letters and determines um, based off like the codes and stuff. Like if it was a late payment, it goes to there. If it is a collection, it's going to be sent here. If it's a target up, it's going to be sent here. And with the eOscar system, it's comprised of compliance-based standards that before any letter has to be reported, it has to go through Metro 2 compliance. Yep. And what Metro 2 compliance consists of is it uses the Fair Credit Reporting Act, um, the other the other laws like the any law like the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, it uses the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, it uses all these laws put together that was made by Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax in the second year bureau into this. Once they once they created that, I was like, wow. So when I attack something Metro 2 compliance, and there's like every letter has to be compliant with um with the uh, credit bureaus. Not only the credit bureaus, they have to be compliant with any data furniture, any secondary bureau, or any third party that they share information with. So everybody has to be compliant. So you're not only attacking the three bureaus, you're attacking, you know, 10, 15, 20 bureaus at once. Same rules still apply. They still have 30 days to respond to that. Throughout the whole process, um, they had to send, you know, send it all UPS. They had to send carbon copy letters. Everything has to be accurate on the, when it's reported. And in the mentorship program, one thing that I learned is that most items don't even meet a compliance standard to even be reported. So, mm -hmm. I went from factual looking at the actual report saying like this thing's already listed. We're at, we're disputing it based on what it's saying. But when you dispute something metro two, you are you are looking at it saying it is inaccurate, it's unverifiable, but you're saying for that reason, it doesn't even meet a compliance standard to even be reported. So you gotta mm -hmm. there's so mm -hmm. many that involved with it. But once I learned that. I was like, you know what, I'm going Metro 2. And since I've used Metro 2, uh, my clients, they've seen results, you know, first, first, second rounds, which mm. is so my my confidence level with Metro 2 skyrocketed. So I, I'm definitely. a huge Metro 2 compliance for sure. Definitely, definitely. Would you say that's your main way of disputing? Do you still do factual disputing as well? Do you do a combo or how do you do it? Once, once I switched over to Metro 2, I just do straight Metro 2. Got you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, dope, definitely dope, dope, dope. Okay, so I want to transition. Let's talk about let's talk about what's currently maybe some struggles within the business. What are you currently working on? You know, things like that. Yeah, so I just told you like it's kind of like a whole re a rebrand process. Yeah, um, only for me struggling. Um, I'm looking to get into like more systems. Um, I'm looking to get a CRM system. I'm in the works of that right now. So trying to figure out how to get that structure to generate more leads. Um, but the the way I've been doing leads so far is of course content creation, um, mm -hmm. hitting people up on social media platforms. And now what I've incorporated is a Facebook, a Facebook group. Now I have I'm nice. gonna be blogs. I'm gonna keep everything like so personal so I can relate to them on a human level. Mm -hmm. um, those are like the main things that's that I've been struggling with. It's just um just new systems put into place. Systems. I just rebranded everything. So now I'm just in the process of putting the steps together. But since I made that switch to Metro 2, um not nothing like as far as educational wise, mm -hmm. structure wise, everything is good. Um now it's just getting myself more out there. Um, figuring, figuring out ways to reach out to more business owners, more entrepreneurs, um, actually going into like car dealerships or going mm -hmm. in, uh, like financial broken services, figuring mm -hmm. out how to network better at networking events. So really it's just all the networking part that is a little bit of a struggle because I didn't know this at first, but now gotcha. it's, the more I go to it, I have to figure out, okay, who are the people who are going to take it seriously and who can I help serve the most? And that's something that's helped me. Um, that's that's gonna help me more is 
I know they say that you're you're divine. We're both, you know, believers in mm -hmm. something that talks about we have to serve others. So now mm -hmm. when I look at perspective, like how can I serve you? How can I serve you? It's a win-win situation because I'm still getting paid. I'm still providing you a service and you can get the service. You can help your client service. So everybody's winning at the table. Exactly. So that, that's, that's really it for sure. Okay, exactly. So it sounds like systems. Have you looked into Go High Level? I'm pretty sure you know about Go High Level. I, I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Um, I've seen, I watch, I, I've actually watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos and I came across one the other day that talks about whole guy, whole, go high level, but I didn't really look into it that much though. Uh, okay. I mean, as far as systems, I would personally recommend looking into that if you have it. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to use. I don't know if you're a tech, techie person. I'm not tech person, but I mean, I could easily use it, you know? So just, just a recommendation for something to look up or anyone listening to the podcast. The specific one that we use is Connectly. So it's basically Go High Low. It's like a white label version. So I would look up that. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the importance of nurturing and having those funneled steps. So, okay, that's good. So I wanted to talk about just, do you have like any offerings in terms of how do people can work with you? Do you have like any eBooks, courses? Want to talk about that? The entry level for the people that just want to do it themselves, they don't want to hire a credit per specialist. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to hire somebody to help them get funding. I have mm -hmm. two ebooks out currently. The first one is called From Zero to Hero. It's basically going to show you um, how to build your credit score. Um, it's going to give you resources to actually repair it. It also, yeah. the book is like how to grow it with like the credit cards. Um, basic credit education, like the basic things that you need to know, like the statement date, the due date, the billing cycle, just kind of a whole credit um, education book that you need to grow your credit. And it talks about like the five factors, how mm -hmm. you can all these things that requires um, repairing your credit. Then the second ebook that I have is same thing, do it yourself, but it's specifically for business owners, um, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, or, you know, real estate agents that want to structure their business properly and obtain mm. the funds. in there they're gonna i teach about how you can how to structure your business properly um the how they can scale using credit so it kind of gives them like the value of why credit is important because there's a lot of business owners out there that they just use straight cash and they just use their debit but once they realize once you start a business and you get your LLC EIN in the business bank account oh you can get like funding from the bank and then invest back into yourself invest into better systems, invest into more education that's going to scale your business because you're investing back into yourself. So okay. it kind of is also, you know, a couple of a uh, couple of gems in there. Um there's a secret funding list. So now so now it's like when they it's a secret funding list. So now it's like after they get the business structure and they can get um how should I say this? It's basically Man, I just had a brain for it. It basically talks okay. about <laughs> it basically talks about um what banks they can go to after they structure the business properly to receive that funding. Um Okay. So you're offering both of those ebooks? Yeah, so those those are the ebooks. And then um the other the other services that I that I have, of course, we have the it's called basically the express plan. This is just the credit repair service itself. Um gotcha. attached to the bureaus. Um, and then also what comes with that is you get a, it's called the next level advising bootcamp where it gives you, you know, basic credit education, um, that, that comes included with the service. And then also, okay. uh, you get mentorship. Um, you're going to get your own strategy plan where I look at your credit for, okay, you need to run this play. You need to run this play to boost up your score. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, the bigger picture uh, the biggest, I guess you say, mentorship program that we do have is called the Premium Express Plan, where how I talked about before, where you're going to get me and my business partner, and he's already funded over like a quarter of a million dollars for mm, people. Okay. He knows, you know, it's more advanced because you're still going to get the credit for service, but it's going to be two people mentoring you about credit. Um, mm. You're going to get monthly coaching calls. You're going to get way more advanced credit repair, I mean, credit education. And then it's still the same credit per service. So it's more, um, you get more of a, I would say like a accountability type. Um, what people are looking for when you join the group, like accountability, more hands-on mentorship. Like you have us like literally on the call, like telling you like run the, run the play. So mm -hmm. 
a lot more value with that higher service for sure. And that's for people that um, in the second plan is just, listen, I know how to do it. I just need my credit fixed. But the third plan is like, they don't know anything. We'll put them into that third plan for sure. Okay, most definitely. Okay, dope, dope, dope. So where can people actually find you to get all this information? Yeah, so you you can uh, follow me on Instagram at Daniel W. Dixon. Um, mm -hmm. If you my bio, you're going to get everything listed um my website you know you're going to get access to my youtube as well um you're going to get access to my ebooks and mm -hmm. anything else as far as like you know applications to work with me um to see if you know if i'll be able to help you and if we think that we would be compatible with each other so go to my instagram you're going to find everything there to work with me and uh, find out more information about what i do and what my business uh is consisted of oh so link and bio everything you spoke about they'll be able to find it right Okay, those of y'all listening, you know, I get straight to it. So just go to the link in his bio. I'm going to link his IG down below. If you're listening on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, it will be in the description as well. Can you give us maybe one last gem or what you want people to take away from the episode? Yeah, so I'm assuming, like how you said before, most people in here, they watch you because they probably want to start a credit per business. And mm -hmm. tell the people that are newly watched or people that consistently watch, is go for it. You know, mm -hmm. something that I've learned with just mentorship and education is the people that take action get way more ahead. And yep. when you overthink the situation, when you think about, oh, I got to get this started first, oh, I got to do this, you're actually killing your success because you may have the, like, you may not know this, but you may already have the skill sets, you may already have the success, you may already have the customer relationships, you may already have these things, but you're not allowing yourself to take the next step, which is literally starting. Whereas me, I'm not the best salesperson. I'm not the best person with uh, like customer relationships. I'm not the best. Like there's way more better people. But since I took action, I was able to gain experience and yep. learn my mistakes and to get improved. So that's why I'm getting ahead of so many people because I took action. And that's something that a lot of people are scared to pull the trigger, but you got to take a risk. I'm a big believer in life is about risk. And since we're both divine, bro, um, a big Bible verse that I live on is um, it's Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11. And it says, um, I think he says, he says something about like, have I not, have I not told you don't be afraid or discouraged, like be strong and courageous. So like anything that you attack, you have to talk, you have to attack it with courage. You, you just got to try not to get yourself out there because you'll never know. And you're always going to be sitting on the sidelines while somebody else is running the play and winning the championships. So oh, man. I'd, rather, I'd rather be that person than just, I don't know. And I would rather yeah. fail. I used to, I used to, well, I still hate failing. Like failing sucks, but I see failure as I'm getting better. Exactly. And I'm, me failing is so much better than somebody not even trying at all. They can laugh all they want, but if you don't start, and I know there's somebody listening to this that wants to start, I'm telling you, you're getting the confirmation to start. Mm. Mm. start because you'll never know. And the journey is so great. Always, always enjoy the journey and never, of course we want to get to a goal, but don't be so wrapped up on the end goal. Always just focus on the process of you becoming the person you need to become. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that are doing this will understand that. And hopefully, you know, I'm speaking to somebody today about this. I wish that I would have known this previously but mm -hmm. with my experience with the wisdom that i have anything that you want to do you have to start you have to find a mentor because a mentor is basically a lifeguard you're exactly. going to jump, jump the deep end and you can't drown because somebody's always there so mm -hmm. don't be afraid to start and get a mentor once you have those two things you know everything is going to take care of itself with mistakes experience and then once you limit those mistakes you can't lose every single time you're, mm -hmm. you're get better and you're going to start winning so definitely that's the, part, the last thing that i had in the the best gyms that i could get man seriously definitely definitely appreciate you my guy danny make sure you guys tap in with them make sure you guys you know go ahead and follow him tap into his services let him know you enjoyed the value he dropped on a podcast with that being said y'all have a blessed one thank you michael yes, sir